Hello and good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. Going to dive into today's masterclass. It's really all about, uh, you know, if you're absent for 2022, uh, what you might have missed. So um, I think we do introduce a lot of things, and I just want to make sure everybody's up to speed. So and that is the plan. I want to welcome everyone. Good to have you here. Uh, Cody Bear, Jack, Frank, Carol. Frank's in the house. Sean, awesome. Garth, yeah, we're going to have a good day. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Um and it's well rested. It's a Friday, so uh, I'm so excited about today. And um, you know, always interested in knowing how everybody's grown over the past year as a maybe as a designer or artist, as per, as a person. You know, it's all uh, all good to to reflect. Uh, love the end of the year. Love New Year's, by the way. Um, it's just good to kind of time to reflect. So let's just kind of jump over. I'll just quickly share my screen. And uh, let's keep the conversation going. So just so you know, like what I will usually do is like you could easily just jump out and search for, say, dimension, new features. Right. Uh, but sometimes that's this content is buried. Um, and then I end up learning just like some new things just kind of uh, around the way. So we have our top features. Um, this is awesome, by the way. This this is from September. I didn't have no idea. Oh, why did I search dimension? Why is dimension on my brain? Uh, yeah, that's from 2020. So um, <laughs> uh, let's do well. we could do InDesign new features. But they all follow the same format, right? Search on it, click. It's going to be Adobe Store Support article, talking about sort of uh, you know the auto style technology preview. Oh shoot, sorry, my camera's a little off. It has a tendency to do that. Follow my head. There it is. Zip zip. There we go. Sorry about that. That was a weird angle. I wish event dimension had new features. So we could talk about that as well, like anything you guys want to talk about, because dimension uh, does kind of have, um, you know, is very similar to uh, painter, or excuse me, stager, right? To our substance products, but mainly stager. So um, yeah, so essentially we're kind of maintaining two products, which that can only happen for so long. But, you know, you search in here, it's you want to see a, a detailed new feature summary. So you can do this for InDesign, uh, Photoshop, right? Uh, Illustrator, I have Illustrator right over here, right? We can start to even compile all of these together to make it a little bit easier. Uh, but we can see just like a number of features and it's all about kind of going down and seeing a detailed new feature summary as well. So that's what I'm kind of looking at. You know, this, for instance, like, I don't know if you know about this, one click delete and fill, okay? And uh, usually there's like a little bit of like a snafu with that, by the way. So let's just say we have this image. Let's just take it. Actually, this is what we're gonna, like, this is what the article says. Let's actually read it. Let's go in here. Um, Okay, simply use object selection tool to make your selection and, and use the following keyboard shortcuts to remove it, right? Uh, so, you know, shift delete should work. So this is what you'll do. You use your object. We will do, so this is, a, I think like an error with this um, particular um, object selection, uh, at least the, uh, the FAQ there. So we'll go in there, we'll select this guy. He is selected, right? We'll do, and I might, I might be proven wrong. Shift delete, shift delete brings up this fill dialog. It's always brought up this fill dialog, always. This is usually how I feel things. It doesn't do what it says it's gonna do because the missing piece from that article is the fact that it needs to be just uh, its own file. So it needs to be just like a, a, a flat layer. So we'll copy that. We'll just, oops, sorry about that. We will copy this, paste it, new file, we'll flatten it. And now we'll go in and select 
this guy. Even though he went to all that trouble to stand on the edge and you're just going to remove him like that? How dare you? He's like, man, I was so scared up there. And you're just going to remove me? So we'll select them just like we did before with object selection tool. We'll do shift delete. And then he gets deleted. Ah, magic. Um, and let me make sure. Um, cool. I am staying warm up here in Colorado. So boom, deleted him. So that's that's how that works. And uh, the, the short of it is it has to work on images that are um, like just have one layer in them. That's the situation. Um, like this one, for instance. Oh, that's a WebP file. This one, for instance. They go through here. Flat file. Also, it could just be, as long as it contains one layer, it doesn't have to be a background layer that's locked, right? So we'll come in here, we'll select this, and then we'll hit delete. Boom. Excuse me. Shift delete. And it does its magic, right? So that's what we're doing right in here. Boom. Shift delete. Done. I also want to show you this real fast. Let's undo that. Let's go back here. I thought this was magic as well. Because sometimes when you select something, uh, and maybe we will try him, because he's going to be pretty tricky. Let's just see what happens. This, is, this might be a little complex, so maybe I'll go to this one here. Super cool images. Oh, this one's going to be intense as well. But let's select it. We've selected it. Um, Let's let's try it two different ways now. Let's do let's do this. Let's just say, for instance, you have multiple layers of different things. We're going to do our shift delete that brings up content aware fill, and then we're just going to fill it. Right? And that's what happens. You get this halo effect, right? Do you see that? Not crazy about it. So usually what we teach is uh, we teach selecting it and then doing an expand of selection. So we would do this, you know, expand it maybe 15 or something. That's a little much. But we would show like, hey, you got to expand your selection in order to grab that edge, right? That will work, but let's check this out. And I've crossed my fingers that this works, by the way. So we've selected it. There's this hidden menu. We're going to do a right click a right-click content-aware fill. I guess this is a new thing that um, uh, Elisa showed me last week that I had no idea about. So one of the um, design managers for um, Adobe. So let's just try this content. Oh, no, no, we want this. We want delete and fill selection. So we don't want to go back to that content-aware menu. We want to go to just straight to delete and fill. Ah. Oh. It worked. In fact, I want to undo that, and I want to have those two examples again, just to show everybody. Old way of doing things, selecting, content aware fill, not good. New way. Let's select this crazy thing. Might not be the exact same selection. Right click, delete, and fill. Right, so old way, look at that, new way. And again, I actually did not select this, but I could always jump in, select this part, right, oh, excuse me, using the object selection tool, that marquee tool, select it, right click, delete, and fill. So just to recap, do your screenshot of this. Oh, you met Phil once, seemed obvious to content. Yeah, his name actually is Phil, the guy that was um, hanging out there. So yes, it only works on in the cases of uh, the person. If the person's name is Phil, that's the only case where it works. But look at how magical that is. Before, after, before, after. And we're well on our way. So um, yeah, so delete and fill, you know, will expand the selection? Yes, basically, yes. I don't really know what it does. 
uh, obviously grabs more pixels. I don't know if it's straight up expand selection or not. So yeah, don't we all need delete, you know, sort of content aware fill in our lives. Sorry for that. Just opening up a little. Ah. Let's open up some hipster water. All right, so yeah, that's ultimately when you want to do. Uh, when it comes to all these selections, and maybe I could find a, another example. I just got all this cool stuff. Look at these cool rocks. Let's open up the cool rocks. And this is all part of a project I'm currently working on. I don't know if you guys saw it the other day, but uh, this is the this is the piece that I'm working on, right? Um, so yeah, that's where all this stuff came from. And I recorded my screen the other day. I just need to get down to um, uh, like editing it down. So um, hipster water is beer. Hipster water would be an IPA, I feel. And I'm very much a hipster. I'm like. Whatever. I'm not really a hipster, but I like everything the hipsters like. So I mean that in the kindest way possible. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, doing something like this, this is where we're headed with that work. Uh, you know, and it's all a matter of taking this content, selecting it, stuff like that. So that's what I'll do. Like, I might grab this, duplicate it. We'll still use object selection tool. We could use, of course, the rectangle to select it, you know, copy paste it. We've essentially isolated it on a new background. In fact, we'll just throw up a solid color in the background, just like so. And we can see we've isolated that like no problem. Okay, so we could jump in and do that. We could have different modes for this as well. So obviously these are pretty straightforward. Um, you know, there's object subtract if you need it. This is probably the biggest button up here is like, you know, do you want it to automatically find elements, right, or not? So let's like click to refresh object finder. It better highlight. I've had the issue where it like doesn't highlight and I feel like it's in that mode right now. Auto refresh, blah, blah, blah. Like, so I'm not sure why it's not showing my, me my overlay options. Like, tell me, why is that the case? But jump in here, find it, copy it, paste it. You know, we have our rock. You know, that's all I'm doing. But it's it's kind of highlighting it. Maybe, oh, it's kind of working. Oh, let's switch off the tool. So we're learning together, is that okay? More of a PBR, oh yeah, maybe you're right, Ryan. I don't know, like, is the hipster drink a PBR? Why do, why do people need labels? What's the big deal there? Why? It's so dumb. But that's okay. It just helps us with our brain. We need to organize content and, uh, you know, and people are content to our brain. So we just need to, we need to put people in buckets, I guess, to help our brain, you know, understand the world. Okay, so we're going to switch back. Boom. Okay, switched it to it. Sample all layers. It is highlighting it. I don't see it because it's on that blue. You probably caught it. It's right down here, right? It is highlighting it. And that's where this is coming from. So we're going to amp this up. Magenta, which a form of magenta, just like my shirt. And that's why I think I picked it out today because actually it's the color of, year, of the year for 2023. Um, so I just think that's of note. We'll crank this up to 100. There we go. Now we could spot it. So it might been it might have been an issue where I just wasn't able to see it, but now I can certainly see it now. There it is. We can click. There's our object. Paste. Right. Come over here. Analyze that image again. Grab this one. Copy. Paste. You know. And we're just like sort of isolating all the rocks that we need to. I love magenta too. I like so the color of the year. I love the color of the year. Can we just talk? I, can I just say I'm so happy to be here? Uh, color of the year 2023. Viva magenta. It's called Viva magenta. It's not a pure magenta, by the way. Um, it's a little bit. Uh, it's slightly muted. Makes it look a little bit more. Um, a little bit more muted makes it look a little bit more uh, like sophisticated, 
right? It's not loud and in your face. It's just a sophisticated magenta, and I'm all about it. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the magenta verse, but that's 2023 happening. Awesome. All right, so we have our cool rocks. We have that done. We're going through all these little things that you might have missed in Photoshop currently, but this is another one like, We've been working on the device. We can get a little bit more detailed results, which means going out there, sort of searching a database of uh, what the computer thinks rocks are. And I just, did that just highlight that one? I kind of want to try this. Let's do a select subject. We're right here. Going in here, we'll do a select subject. It grabs everything, copy it, paste it. Let's just see how our results, these are just rocks. I think if it was the using cloud processing, it actually might uh, have a better idea of say who a person is or what objects look like in order to select them better. So it actually might work better with people, something that you know I would like to test out. In fact, let's jump over here and test that out really quick on this piece that I have. Let's go back down to this lady. Let's check out this selection. We're gonna try this really fast. Uh, something that just has more unique edges, things like that. And uh, let's do our best to select her. So we'll still go to our selection tool, select subject, device. We'll just do click, select subject, Mask, actually let's duplicate this first. That's what you get straight up using select subject uh, device. Now we'll go in here, we will change this to cloud for detailed results, right? Selects her, select subject, and then mask. I'm noticing uh, absolutely no difference, to be honest with you. So something I need to ask about. Uh, nonetheless, I usually always have mine set to quicker results. These are things that you could set in your preferences. So we can jump in there to our preferences and take a look at um, our Uh, in fact, this is this is another thing that I, again I I hope you didn't miss. I love this. Learned about this the other day, Frank. Do you know about this, Mike? What's up? Um, but uh, this is they I I think they still have it. So at Adobe, every now and then, like they'll just take a Friday and you just get to develop whatever you want. And this is a feature that came out of one of those development se sessions that one of the programmers was like, hey, you know what would be cool is if we could add search to preferences. And that's exactly what I need, cloud. I could even mix, misspell it, Claude. It's like, whoa, you need cloud documents or cloud processing. Um, so we'll select that, it'll jump out to it, and this is where it is. So I just love that there's search in there for me as like a presenter the fact that I could find things for once, because I'm like, oh shoot, it's not in my script. Where do I, like, do people have to watch me click around? Nonetheless, this is where your select subject processing or your selections processing is at as well. So um, I think that's pretty cool. Saturation, kind of like spice on the British baking show. They don't like flavor in the UK. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ah, freaking just, you're just trying to tick uh, tick off the whole whole uh, man. Whoa. But you know what I think is interesting? I think it's interesting in terms of color, things like that. Like it's very much. It could be regional. It could be cultural. I think it's fascinating that you get to say down to warmer climates. This is me making big generalizations. Warmer climates. You go down to Latin America, Central America. It's like bright colors, like you know, Colombia, Haiti, like, uh, I haven't been to Haiti, but you, Cuba, for instance, you know, colorful build, everything's colorful. But then you go to the Nordics where it's cold and everything's just much more muted colors, 
you know, it's the Hagee, Hagee, am I saying that right? H-Y-G-G-E, something like that. Uh, but the pallets per, I guess, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Per like community is fascinating. So the magenta might resonate, might not. So, all right, enough of that. You guys get the idea. Uh, but yeah, so even in the background, like, am I using magenta? I have some of it right in here, by the way. That we could always change and get to and all that stuff. All right, cheers. We've gone through all this. I am actually, you know, picking like a magenta right in here. And we could satisfy everybody by making this a little bit more muted and on one end versus brighter on the other end, something like that, okay? But since you mentioned gradients and we're talking about colors, let's take a look at what we could do with colors because in the beta version of Photoshop, we've updated the gradient tool. Talked about this last week, just so you know. If you're curious about the beta, I think this is just absolutely huge that we've given people the opportunity to access uh, beta apps, which is so cool. It's like, hey, this is stuff that's coming. The big thing is we just want to get your feedback. Like all too often, of course, we release features and then we get a deluge of feedback of like, what well, doesn't this work this way? Well, like let your voice be heard early on um, uh, is the whole reason for these beta apps. Okay, just so you know. But here we are, Photoshop beta. Let's jump in here. I'm working on that plugin. We could talk about plugins later. But where is my layers panel? Let's put that over there. New layer. And we have the ability to add, we have this gradient that is, uh, I guess, what, dynamic? I don't know, non-destructive? Uh, editable post uh, drawing it out. And I like, love this, this better make it into the final, right? So there's always that situation too, but all too often I might jump in here and add a burst, like right up here. I want it to be lighter in that corner. So I'll do something like that. And then I'll change that blend mode to say overlay. So it's just an easy way to add, like, just like a highlight to the sky or something like that. So I'm just adding that nice transition. Since we are talking about magenta and we're so excited about that color, we can jump in here and change that to, of course, a magenta, something like that. There we go. And oh, by the way, we got to crank up the, wait for it, wait for it. I'm moving around, I'm looking around, I'm looking around. Uh, like right in here, I need to change the opacity. So right in here, if you double click, you could only change the colors. So it does mean you do need to, um, change, change the gradient in its entirety, I guess. Actually, let's go over here. This will work layers, double click on it. You got to go a little, oops, you got to go a little bit deeper. You got to go in here to the actual gradient fill. Ugh, darn it. Click once. There we go. You know what? It's now a, a double click and not a, it's a single click and not a double click is what I'm just noticing. But then you have to go clear in here. Um, and this is where you'd change the opacity. So that's something I'm not crazy about, to be honest with you, is you have to go so deep to change the opacity. I love that the color is right here, right? You just double click, change that color. I'm not crazy about how deep you have to go uh, to change the opacity. Oh wait, I might, let's, let's just double check. Let's see if I'm wrong, because now I'm noticing these little guys. Nope, they don't do anything. Well, they do something, but they don't adjust the opacity. Uh, but right in here, you know, making that uh, transition or even adding another color stop is uh, what you can do as well. You add it on the ends. That's how you add the color stops. Interesting. All right, you guys get the idea. Why can't the gradient tool be like that in Illustrator as well? Thank you. Yeah, why can't it? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Come on, man. 
this is where your you you uh, your voice needs to be heard. It's a situation where Adobe is so big, and you have these like big apps, you know, just hardcore code. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 similar. But again, if I double click, yeah, this pops up. I could control the opacity in Illustrator. This is what I like. It's all right here. And Photoshop, mm, it's not right there. You can only really just change the color. So anyways, this is the gradient in here. So there's that. Yeah, I need to call Shantanu. Hey, Shantanu. Hey, buddy. I know I'm going to see you for Christmas. Hold on one second. I just had some business to attend to. I would like the, <laughs> I would like the opacity... <laughs> slider or something to be, you know, right here. Can you fix that for me? Okay, Paul. Thanks for bringing this. I'm like, dude, this is our lifeblood. There's nothing too small. Like, this is important stuff. Like, just give me, give me the opacity somewhere. Um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Another thing I want to talk about really fast, and again, I talked about this last week. I'm going to I'm gonna take two colors that are going to be complementary. Uh, so if we're talking magenta, um, we want to go opposite of magenta. So the other end would be maybe yellow, greenish. But uh, right in here, the methods. So if this is changed to classic, look at how muddy it gets. So linear adds white. It's almost classic adds makes it darker. Linear makes it brighter. Perceptual actually just typically gives me a smoother transition of colors. So we'll go back to classic. You know, pretty hard lines. Like I'm seeing these bands of, of dark. Perceptual gets rid of that and just makes for a smoother transition all the way around. So keep that in mind. That's where that comes from. Perceptual is now uh, the default, but this is a situation we have in all our apps. It's like we could never get rid of anything because people are like, no, I like it the old way. You changed. And think about it. If you spent time dialing in and creating a piece of art in Photoshop and you open up that PSD and maybe it's changed, maybe it asked you to update all of your classic gradients, even though our classic worked perfect for your design, and then your design changes on fo in, because of Photoshop, yeah, I would, I, would be, I would be upset. So yeah, nothing ever goes away in Photoshop because, you know, we're making stuff. Oh man, I wish I could just call up Chantanu. Hey buddy. He's a world-class guy. Can I just talk about that? You know, I don't know. He's like one of the best CEOs in Silicon Valley, without a doubt. Like, seriously. Like, I think even from even at Max, we're, we're downstairs, and I run into him in the hallway downstairs, and he's like, Paul, tell me, what do you think? Like, honestly, what do you think about Express? Um, you know, and I was like, I would love to see more hooks in with... Uh, professional apps like Photoshop. I want to be able to take an express design and open it up directly in Photoshop. Or, you know, there's there's remove background on express. I want to be able to just refine that in Photoshop. So making it better for pro designers was my, but for him to merely ask that, I thought that was like really huge. Okay, so we have that done. We've uh, made a little bit of work in here, right? We have our rainbow weird, it's not, it's not working out too great, but that's okay. Uh, and of course, Illustrator has this capability, but I'm gonna transition a little bit to Illustrator and our bridge from Illustrator to uh, Photoshop is my next feature I'm gonna talk about. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Like loved by everybody. Like I really love, like I love our, I love our leadership staff. Like, are they always making the best decisions, in my opinion? Could I do it better? Probably not. But, um, yeah, like, overall, to have such, like, genuine, nice people, uh, it's just, it's just huge. 
you know, it's just, it's just nice knowing that you're working for nice people. And I know like for me, what means a lot to me is that, uh, that you're a good person. And I, I feel like they're, they're good people that like listen to you and you're like, I'm just some designer guy, you know? And they'll just sit here like, well, what do you think? I'll tell you a quick story back before we even launched creative cloud, I was invited into a room, uh, myself and Jason, and I think Rufus and Terry White were there. And he just went around the table and there was probably 15, 20 of us and said, hey, what do you think about Creative Cloud? Should we launch Creative Cloud? Should we just go with boxes and make it difficult to update things? Do we go with boxes or do we do Creative Cloud? And, uh, you know, it was the fact that what, you know, the fact that he asked everybody was huge. I'm just, I just love the guy. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have this artwork here. In fact, I'm gonna ungroup it. Um, what we have in here, I'm just taking a look at it. It's all pretty straightforward. Maybe there's nothing too crazy going on here. Oh, you know what, this might, so this is text and then a bunch of shapes. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna copy it. We're gonna go into Photoshop. Sure, the beta, why not? Paste it in as layers. And we're actively working on this too. Introduced this earlier in the years. Preserve illustrators, attributes, layer structure, and relative positioning. So we'll click right there. We'll learn more in a second after I paste it in. Click OK. Yeah, I know, Jan. I hear you. OK, so this is what I was... Take it a look at, and oh, this links to the same article, so that's good. Some of the content in this selection will be rasterized. Continue pasting. Yes, continue, because I want to see what came in and uh, what didn't. But this is one of those active areas that we're working on. So the problem with that, like, Jan, yes, put it in Creative Cloud. Hey, can you just put it in there, you know? It's like, I know I bought all these groceries, can you throw a bunch more groceries in there for the same price? You know, I hear you. I want it as well, but um, yeah, not quite, buddy. Um, so this is what happened. It looks like it rasterized the text, which I'm kind of surprised by. Right, so it brought everything in, everything, all this stuff is like compound path, uh, you know, we could, we could change this element, right? Stuff like that. Everything kind of comes in as its own layer right over here. But it did rasterize the text, which I'm curious about, because honestly, that shouldn't have happened. And now I need to know why. Um, and let's, let's kind of go off the assumption that it might be just the uh, stroke. That's probably what it is. So we'll go back to, let's go into our appearance panel and we'll reduce to basic appearance. Reduce to basic appearance. Open this up. While you're at it, build me a unicorn. You got it, bud. I will build you a unicorn. Um, How is this? Uh... Okay, there we go. I'm clearing the appearance entirely. So here's my text. Uh, I'm now just gonna take this text. I'm gonna copy it. Is it okay that we learn together? We're learning like the inner workings of some of these features. Cause I bet you anything, well actually we'll see if I'm a liar or not. Boom. All right, fantastic. That came in just fine. So what did we learn? Well, we learned that anytime you're adding complex uh, strokes and effects to text, it's gonna wanna maintain the integrity of your design so it just serves up the, um, it rasterizes it. So that's what happens there. If you add a lot of, um, a lot of effects and stuff like that, whatever. If it's not coming in right, just go to your appearance panel and uh, reduce it to basic appearance. So, all right. 
Yes. So yes. Good. Good point, Jan. So I think I, I would hope what would happen with this, because you're right. This should come in. Let me move this properties panel over. You're right. It, it should come in like this, and it should automatically somehow add the stroke. So there needs to be some sort of interpolation of, uh, you know, Illustrator's stroke feature to um, what we have in Photoshop. So you're right. You're right, my friend. You are so right. And I'm glad we're on the same page, by the way. Back to the substance question. I want all the substance stuff in 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 Creative Cloud. Just uh, just FYI. I would be asking the exact same thing. So I'm like, yeah, man, can't you just put it in there? I mean, we can, but we also want to pay those people in that organization. And we didn't buy um, algorithmic for nothing, you know? We got to... We can't just buy a company for billions and then like, here it is for free. I don't know. You know, business. I hate business stuff. Dang it. But nonetheless, that's the latest feature. Uh, not even the banana tool. Can't Photoshop. Banana tool should still be in there. Yeah, there's the banana tool and all that stuff. All right. So let's just jump back out. We talked about the beta apps. I always keep these updates going. Um, I have an After Effects beta, Media Encoder beta, uh, and things like that. But let's get back out here to our list. And we're moving right along. Really covering everything that you need to know. A lot of it's been around selection tools, one click delete and fill, right? Invite to edit, share for review, very similar. Uh, photo restoration. restoration. This stuff is getting better because we're training it on more and more images. But in my opinion, seems to only, you know, it just depends on the image, right? It's a very image dependent. Content credentials, right? If you turn that on, then every edit you've made to your design uh, will be um, logged, if you will, to show that you uh, did not use any uh, AI, maybe, or you didn't steal your content. That's why you want to turn on the content credentials beta. Okay. And then you could expose that sort of metadata to, say, Twitter and other, like other community, other, other companies are part of this. Um, content credentials initiative, but not everybody is like exposing all the metadata and it's gonna make your files larger, just FYI. So live Gaussian blur, backtrack neural filter, thing like that. You know, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm just kind of only interested in the stuff that like, that I'm interested in. <laughs> like, yeah, so. The backdrop filter, neural filter, like I'm, I don't see myself using that, by the way. I would like to, but this might be a case right in here where we have this person and we'd want to add a backdrop, say, to her. So let's image reveal all. There she is. Let's just bring her into... Photoshop right over here. There we are. Take her. Smart object. Filter. Neural filters. And uh, let's take a look. You have to download it. But, you know, this area is seeing a lot of activity is the short of it. Hey, Daniel. It's cold in Denver. Burr. Hey, that's where I am. What are you doing in my city? All right, golden, golden black paints swirling. We'll go with that initial prompt, click create. I have not used this, by the way. So we'll see what happens. There we go, let's go with that golden black. There's the golden black paint swirling. And yeah, eighties synthwave glitch art neon sun rays. Let's try that. Eighties synthwave glitch art 
neon sun rays. You get the idea. Cold in Montreal, of course. Cold but sunny. Oh, beautiful. Frank, you're in Montreal. Buddy, I want to go to Montreal, like, again, so bad. I love Montreal. Like, I love Montreal in the summertime. But Montreal's amazing. Like, old town Montreal. So beautiful. Like, seriously, I love, like, French Canada a lot. But I also like Toronto. So, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, let's jump in here. Let's do a, this is what I usually do is I often use these quick actions, remove background. That's what I do. Shortcut it. Boom. There she is. By the way, look at how clean that is. Like, let me invert this. That's looking pretty darn good. In fact, I'm going to do this really, really fast because uh, let's get her out that that there we are let's just do this compared to select subject cloud uh and then mask yeah pretty much the same results so anyways there you have her i'd probably paint more of this light on her and uh, all that fun stuff we're getting some synth wave vibes. Probably what I would do right in here is, um, yeah, this is where I get a little lost with, uh, you know, I'd probably try a gradient map on just her that's set to uh, something like that. Let's reverse it. And now that we have that set up, we could start to dial this in and make this darker. Like so. Uh, the lights look okay. I would probably like make, why can't I? Why is, why can't I change the opacity there? Maybe because it is a gradient map, who knows? But click OK, you know, take that down to say overlay, right? And there's our before, after, right? Just looks, just looks cooler when you agree. Thank you, Frank. Uh, you know where I want to go is I want to go back to Le Nordique, which is your like spa on the mountainside, kind of built into this natural environment. All the different like hot tubs, even the cold plunge you can jump into. There's the weightless pool that's like the salted water where you just float as if it's like you're floating in space. But you, it's a pool where everybody gets to go to. Everybody ends up in the corner. Like it, there's, there's something where it's just like you kind of move this way and then everybody's kind of crammed in the corner. <laughs> that's just kind of funny. But yeah, do you know, um, do you know the Le Nordique? I'm curious. All right, so enough chitter chatter. Let's go back. We've already talked about Photoshop and the beta. Photoshop on the iPad, which I have right here. I don't have it connected right now, um, but it, you know, it's like all those features that you'd expect. Um, being able to use uh, Photoshop on the iPad, select subject. A lot of those things that I already kind of mentioned um, are. Uh, in Photoshop on the iPad, and it's a good way to kind of get started. And of course, Photoshop on the web beta. Do you guys need to know more about that? I don't think so. I don't think that's a hidden feature or anything, but yes, Photoshop on the web. I don't think we talk about it a lot, and I'm not sure why. Um, but just go to photoshop.adobe.com and you'll see how fast this team is catching up with the desktop which I think is awesome, right? It's just, it's just really cool how quick they're, uh, they're catching up is all. Uh, hello, Marcus, seeing you out there. Muriel on Facebook, Afrosia, Dan, 
Hello. Good to see you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. So reading in that file, right? This is probably the best part is you could kind of work in the browser and then you have this open in the desktop app. Provided you're logged in as the same person, sure enough I am because I have like two different accounts just to make things confusing for me. But they're really smart in how they put things together in, uh, in the browser. Because it's like if we did, you know, update Photoshop with new tools or new ways of doing things, this is how we would do it. So that's what I like about Photoshop uh, on the web. Um, you know, all these controls right up here, easy to get to. Some of the things they could have, you know, made a little bit more consistent. I think the eyeball is on maybe this side. I could be wrong. Maybe that's Photoshop uh, on the iPad, but that's the only thing that bothers me. So we won't worry about that loading up. Let's jump over to Illustrator and some of these other tools as well. Biggest thing to come out of Illustrator's course, uh, Intertwine. Because probably aware of Intertwine. I don't know. I don't want to assume anything, but yes, Intertwine is awesome. So we could decide to take this. Actually, let's take this line. Boom, 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 ba, zaba, shaba, bam. And uh, let's just let's just uh, have some fun. with mainly this line. Wait for it, wait for it. I know everything doesn't match perfectly, but that's okay. Let's take this, oops. There we go. Reverse this. Get rid of that. Move this over. Boy, what a flight. I would be I would be so ticked off if this was my flight. I'm like, dude, <laughs> why didn't you just travel in a straight line? This does not look like fun. Why why am I even on this plane? This is crazy, man. Why are you going all this crazy route? You're, you're nuts. So what do we do? We'll select both of these. We'll go to objects, down to intertwine, and make. So at this point, we can say, hey, you know what? Let's have this go behind. This can go behind. That's going to be in front. Uh, this can go behind. Oh, no, let's not do that. Undo that. Let's have this part go like that. So you get the idea. There you are, intertwine, doing its thing, weaving its way in and out, and it's still editable as we jump in here. You can see the stroke. You know, I can move that around and everything. There it is. There's my points. Zip or whatever. Cool, you dig it, you got it. That's, that's one of the major features. That's probably the biggest feature in Illustrator, I would argue. Uh, so let's kind of move on, because we've... Uh, uh, let's get back to... Yeah, InDesign. So, bet you didn't know this. Enhancements to image trace. Uh, taper and twist 3D objects. Did you know that was new? Because this is something brand new as of this month. So, this is going to be really fun. Yay. Taper and twist. 
We got all our stuff. Uh, you will start to realize that you need a faster computer as you dive into this 3D materials or anytime you jump into 3D, you're like, man, I need a uh, new uh, <laughs> new computer. <laughs> Steve, I just read your comment. You said chemtrail brush. You're killing me. It's funny, though. Funny guy, man. Funny guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I just, Ryan, yeah. Oh, flights. I want to know if anybody's going anywhere for Christmas or for the holidays. Curious as to where everybody is going. We'll click extrude right here. We'll increase the depth. And right down here, after we've increased the depth, we have the ability to taper and twist. There we go. And taper it down just like so. So this is super fun. Uh, this may seem familiar because uh, Photoshop had this as well. But it's cool that we have this ability for tapering and twisting. Let's kind of rotate that around, right? Um, maybe what I would probably do is I would shrink down the original size, have the taper Go clear down to nothing like that. And let's just double click and shrink this down. There we go. We'll do something like that. And we'll rotate it. That's like a cool little spike. But now that we have that spike, and since everybody wants this plane just to go straight, just go straight, my friend. Why do you gotta go this circuitous route? Here's our plane. How can we make this plane 3D? Well, let's take it. Uh, you know what, I might just inflate it. I think it's gonna be easier. Oh, a unicorn horn, ah, oh, good idea too, thank you. There we have that, let's bring that on top. And uh, you know, sort of there's, there's our, our idea. Let's shrink it down a lot but not too much. So yeah, now you have that direct chemtrail, but you get the idea. So you guys are full of jokes. Yeah, so I think the tapering is cool. What, uh, what Photoshop used to have also was uh, they had t t twist, taper, and then bend. So you're able to bend this taper and make like a cool ring, if you will. So, um, you know, hopefully that comes. I don't know if it's going to or not, but really into this twist, you know. I want to I wanna go beyond 300, just one rotation, though. I want to go, like, 15 rotations. Um, so, yeah, but it's new, and look at it. It's like a gift that was just given to me, and I'm like, I don't like it. Dude, it's a gift. It was just, put, it was just given to you. No, oh, it's not quite the shade I want. Like, come on. We're working on it. So there you have that. And I would say largely a lot of these features, you know, in Illustrator, let's bring it back, bring it back. A lot of these 3D materials, like pretty big deal, being able to take and map content onto, onto this particular object. Um, one thing that will not come through is anything with transparency. So notice how it disappeared. And um, this was probably something that I was testing, giving it some transparency. Maybe I did it wrong. We'll just go to somebody else material. We'll just check, maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, so it doesn't, maybe that's just a dark material, but it seems like things with transparency, like you just don't, you don't quite have that ability to have transparency for your materials. Okay. Nor can you load up 3D into Illustrator. Why would you wanna do that? I don't know. You probably have your reasons, but I was asked that yesterday. You know, 
on a stream. They were like, why could I load up OBJs into Illustrator? I'm like, I'm not sure uh, why you'd want to do that. So tell me why, right? But what you can do is once these are 3D, we can export them out as OBJs, GTLF. It's the same uh, methodology, so it really doesn't matter. But right down here, uh, I guess, according to Michael Tanzillo, like th these are using the same interpolation model or whatever. So whether you're using OBJ, GTLF, I don't use either one of these. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just don't know. I think typically everybody just uses OBJ. So OBJ, actually, let's add it right up here. There it is, OBJ, export that out. You guys get the deal. But geez, I'm down on my last minute. Holy cow, this went way too fast. Oh, can you put math in there? Oh, can I? Rick Adams, Rick's in the house, times three. Nope. A, a valid, worthy attempt. I like it. But again, we are just kind of traveling around. Mainly Photoshop and Illustrator, getting you up to speed on uh, a lot of the little things you might have missed. I should have given myself more time than an hour because I'm down to my last couple minutes. I appreciate you guys uh, just hanging out with me. And uh, let's make cool stuff together. Show me what you got out there on the interwebs. We'd love to see it. And uh, I'll do the same. i got more stuff to work on today, so stay tuned. appreciate you guys. Be nice to one another. Go call your mom. She misses you. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon.